Bang! Those, that was really cool. They're amazingly lightweight, you know? They are. They're really they something. They look very Please good on you seat. as well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having so me. So tell me about these pads and, and what they've got in them and what they enable you and the league to do to enhance player safety. Okay. So the sensor has been in those pads. You know our next-gen stats yep, program? Yep, for AWS. Yep. With AWS, the sensors in the program <coughs> statistics on play calls. We in health and safety, so they've been in those pads since 2015. When we started our health and safety initiative, we were building what's called the digital athlete. What the digital athlete is, I consider it the next generation of health and safety for all our players and other sports to come. But what it is is artificial intelligence and machine learning that is doing a virtual representation of every player. So think about a digital twin. With that data, we're able to then develop models and those models are given to staffs of the team so that they can better understand precisely what the players needs to keep them healthy, recover quickly, and also optimize performance. So what you were telling me earlier is that sensors in this set of uh, shoulder pads tell you or the team or the data collector where the player is okay. at any given second on the field, how fast he's running, how much distance he's covering. What else do the, does the data tell you? We're gonna show a video here in just a minute, by the way, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, Jennifer, to explain it in just a second, because it's really cool. Well, well they're gonna run it anyway. Oh, why do we care? <laughs> now, you notice there that every one of the helmets there is tagged, H91, H42, um, V6B. What are, are those helmets similarly equipped with some sort of Sensor or RFID? The only thing that the helmets are equipped with is an RFID tag so we know what every player is wearing every time they take the field, whether that's practice or game. What this video is doing, this is the true core of our artificial intelligence model. So what this does, if we take a look and do a 360 degree representation of a player, that digital twin, what this is providing, as you articulated the right way, each player in game, where they exactly are on field, their speed, their acceleration, and their distance. What this video is doing then is we also get a tremendous amount of data from video. And this is the core of- And then tell me what that squiggly line, it looks like the Dow Jones Industrials versus it, it does. video versus it does. something, but I have no idea what it's showing me. So with all of the data, what that first one was doing is we've created a helmet detection system. So what the computers are now able to do is label and identify every helmet on field. With the data that they're receiving from this chip in this pad, is they're able to say, locate the player to that helmet. That's a model that now today we are able to give head impacts to every team, that's this chart. Every team now gets the number of head impacts per player Per game. And what's measuring the head impact? You said it was just an RFID to, to map the helmet to the player. What's measuring the impact? Two algorithms. The first algorithm, which we crowdsource with AWS, the first algorithm identifies and labels the helmet. The second algorithm takes the actual location from the chip in the shoulder pads. Merging those two, what you are able to do is have then a helmet detection system linking those two. So the frame of the video is then linked to the coordinates on the field to get a head impact per player. Before we started this program, it used to take four days to count head impacts in one game. Then we do a blind review. The technology now does it real time by taking the label, so what computer vision can do with film, identifying it and synchronizing it to data being captured and collected by the player to then have insights to provide us. In this case, it's helmet impact. And you're not even, uh, just go back to that video if we might, uh, just to show it with, uh, with the play running there. The, the beauty of that is that every player is being mapped there. Every player. So you're not merely seeing that impact of number 20 hitting the running back hard like that. You're seeing the linemen who are colliding on every single play, maybe more violently than the running back who's getting hit. Correct, so the helmet detection system that was built and the data that we were receiving from it last year was the first year that we gave on a weekly basis your O-line and your D-line coaches head impacts for linemen so that they could work with the linemen to get the head out of the game, put in injury prevention strategies to get the head out of the game. All right, so how many of you in this room, let's say, watch a few NFL games a month? 
most of you watch a few NFL games a month. I'm going to come back to the key question here, and that is how much you like the new kickoff rule in just a minute, because I think <laughs> that is directly related it to is. some of the data that you found here. But, but let, let me ask maybe the more uh, searching question, and that is how do coaches, general managers, and teams use this data to make their players safer Great in question. practice and in games? Yep. So teams and coaches, whether it's your sports scientists, whether it's your training and or medical staff, have always managed their 53-man roster and had what they call an athlete management system. When you can integrate and aggregate data across all 32 for all 53, you have more power in the data that you are generating to model. So with this system, we can compare one running back across all running backs from daily loads and exertions. That information is then given to the team staff so that the team staff can get on a daily basis the five to 10 players that are at higher risk of injury based on league-wide averages. They can then change their training loads and speeds according to the data that we're providing them. So we're making them smarter and more efficient to be able to manage their roster. So in theory then, the, a lot of what we hear in the NFL is about so-called non-contact injuries. They're often uh, ACL tears or uh, like uh, Aaron Rodgers had last year, a snap Achilles. of the Achilles tendon and so on and so forth. In theory, these uh, algorithms could have some predictive value to tell you that this player is at somewhat greater risk for that kind of non-contact injury? Correct. Now, non-contact, if it is non-contact, what you can do then is if it is an exertion, you can help to train their, it makes them more intelligent. Mm -hmm. Some of them that are contact, you won't be able to actually like say predict or prevent. Yeah. But what we want to do is that application is making them smarter. So the return of that, which we call the NFL, the Digital Athlete Team Portal, for the past two years in preseason, that two-week acclimation period is the highest risk of lower extremity injuries. Have reduced the past two Say years. that again. So the first two weeks, which is your acclimation period. Of before, practice. Before preseason, you have a 90-man roster gutting it to either make the team or they haven't prepared appropriately that two weeks is the highest risk of lower extremity injury at the league. Is that, is that because they're not in shape or? There's multiple, there's different variables at yeah. stake. Yeah. Um, it's either more aggressive because they're trying to make the team and they got one shot to do it. It's yeah. either that they're not yeah. in shape, there's multiple variables. What the application does then, the digital athlete, it makes them smarter to see who loads or exertions on a daily basis are off skew. For the past two years since we rolled that out, we have seen for the first time ever two reductions of lower extremity injuries within that two-week period. Within the two-week period of practice? Correct, that acclimation period. Because the data are telling you things that you didn't already know about strain and stress that could lead to Correct. a pulled hamstring, Correct. Uh, a tweaked MCL. It's making them more intelligent like to better manage their players and their athletes. So are players healthier today? I assume they're healthier today because of this. Yes, I'd hope so. Well, yeah. we'll see it in our injury numbers. Let's talk about that, uh, that rule on, on the kickoff. I'm ready. And I can't explain it, and I watch a lot of football, folks. I don't mm -hmm. know. You kick it from where, the 35? 30. From the 30. And the teams face off where? 15 yards apart. 15 yards apart, which is different from the way it used to be, where the teams were many, many more meters apart, Correct. right? So they would get up a head of speed that was much greater yes. than it is now. Correct. You're going at full speed. Correct. So that would create a danger of collision in injury in and of itself, Correct. correct? And so this rule addresses in part that. Correct. So I'm going to start with a question back to you. How exciting was that old play? When you have speed and space for the Boring, kickoff. but this is even more boring. To me. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for. OK. You know, it was a really <coughs> exciting play. Yeah. But when you have speed and space, it is higher risk of injury. Higher risk of injury. Especially for head impacts and the severity of head impacts. Yeah. And so yes. what we wanted I to do. I can see that for sure. Last year, and it's been iterative, like we've changed the kickoff, but now with the digital athlete, the power of being able to do simulation models, what we were able to do then is we wanted to bring back the kickoff, make it more exciting, uh -huh. but also minimize the risk of injury. Yes. So what we had done was that helmet detection system, we know who's impacted and when, 
And then the engineers had built a concussion function, a risk function. And what they were able to do is take 10,000 seasons of play. Wow and modify different variables. So what they're doing is quantifying the risk. Yeah. And so what they had seen, we also worked with the XFL, we took portions of their kickoff and we modeled it through those simulations. And it turned out that it was less risky to adopt, but you're also decreasing Right, yeah. the speed. The speed, you're decreasing and the, the speed. It's physics. I mean, these are big men who are running at full speed, and if they've got a 10 yard uh, or a 15 yard area to get up to speed, as opposed to a 35 yard, they're not going to be moving as fast. Correct. In in the, in the opposite direction. Which is less risk. I think they should just put the ball in play at the 30. That's all. That's I knew all you were going. You, you know, yeah, I was going to yeah, say I that. I do. I do. But so so kickoffs are up 75 percent, and we have a reduction <coughs> in. Excuse injuries me. as well as high severity impacts yes. for this concussion. Yes. Excuse me, for this kickoff. What the NFL will do and do brilliantly is assess, iterate. So right. you may see it increase Change. in length, right. meaning the lineups, right. Right. Right? right? And that's the iteration of it. Right. Very And now they can you know, quantify it to measure the risk, which is so important. Go back and reevaluate it based off of their confidence in that risk function and see, compare, and contrast. The game is different in part because the kickers are now mostly able to kick it through the end zone. And perfectly placed. And perfectly placed. I mean, they can do that. Most of them kick it into the end zone. Correct. Under the old rule or under the new rule. Let's talk about other sports where this kind of technology, you played uh, uh, lacrosse. intercollegiate lacrosse. I did. High contact sport. I can well, and a lot of running, yeah. a tremendous amount of activity. You must cover miles yes. uh, on, on, the, on the pitch. Can this kind of technology be adapted to those kinds of con high contact sports, hockey, Absolutely. lacrosse? Absolutely. We took our, I'd say, health and safety digital athlete program, and we've already implemented that, working with, from a research perspective, eight of the top NCAA football programs. Yeah. And so that they can start to learn and adapt, but I do think that there will be a longer um, and much broader deployment of this type of technology through sport.